Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, April 10th, 526 a.m. Central Time. Grain market's a little bit higher this morning. May corn futures up three and a half at 434 and three quarters. May, May soybeans, excuse me, up four and a half at 1179. May Chicago wheat up seven and a quarter at 565. May Kansas City wheat up 12 and three quarters at 590. May spring wheat up seven and a half at 658 and three quarters. Uh, let's start off with this Vilsack China story. So China may be retaliating against U.S. grain imports. During an interview on Tuesday, U.S. Ag Secretary Tom Vilsack suggested that China could be favoring Brazilian corn and soybeans. China's bias is likely due to recent legislation limiting its ownership of U.S. farmland. The legislation recently forced Syngenta, which is a Chinese state-owned company, to sell 160 acres of farmland in Arkansas. Chinese imports of U.S. agricultural products were $6 billion less in the first quarter of this fiscal year compared to last year. Vilsack believes that the U.S. needs to be less reliant on China and instead diversify its export markets with other countries. So Vilsack seems to believe that this 160 acres in Arkansas is the reason why China is avoiding U.S. corn and soybeans. I think Tom needs to subscribe to the podcast or the YouTube channel. Um, here's an interesting headline that was across the wires this morning. Ukraine to ship 600,000 tons of corn to China in April and another 400,000 tons in May. Guys, we're just not competitive. We're not competitive to China. Uh, Ukrainian corn, although it, it is in somewhat limited quantities, is the cheapest corn that China can buy. Brazil and the United States are, are pretty much neck and neck in terms of competitiveness. When you get to soybeans, I have a graph here. This is from Reuters. This is this is painting with some broad strokes. But U.S. beans are way overpriced versus Brazil. And despite that fact, um, China is still the largest buyer of U.S. soybeans this year. They've got more U.S. soybean purchases on the books than anybody else. So it's it's as simple as this. If we were competitive to China, we'd be selling more to China. And it just so happens that we are not. I, I don't think this has anything to do with politics. I don't think this has anything to do with the uh, 160 acres in Arkansas, it's a nice thought and a nice idea, and maybe there's some political agenda there, but that is not, uh, at least in my opinion, the reason that China is avoiding uh, grains out of the United States. A surge in commodity prices suggests that the economy, the economy may be improving. The S&P GSCI, an index of global commodity prices, has increased by 12% this year, surpassing the 9.1% increase in the S&P 500. Year to date, copper has gained 10%, oil has risen 17%, and gold is up 13%. Prices have risen on the expectation that economic growth will increase demand from the U.S. and China. A rise in real income has led some experts to believe that commodity prices could climb even higher. Experts also believe that the increase in commodity prices could inhibit the Federal Reserve from reducing rates this year. Some commodities have been strong. In this journal article, they mentioned the Goldman Commodity Index, or what is now the, the S&P Gold, uh, Goldman something something index. They've changed the name. In any case, that index, I don't like the Goldman Index because it's very heavily weighted toward energies, which have been strong. I usually like to reference the Bloomberg Commodity Index because it offers a little bit more of an equal weighting to things like grains and livestock, things along those lines. The um, the Bloomberg index is only up 4.2% year to date, and the S&P is up 9.7. The Goldman index is up 11.7 year to date, or 11.6, but that index, again, is very heavy on energy. So yeah, the um, the rally in commodities, I mean, there there is a, a broad-based rally in commodities, and depending on your metric, it could look better or worse. It could be inflationary in nature. Um, is it good for the economy overall? Probably not, but it, it does suggest maybe increased usage, which I guess is is maybe somewhat of a positive. It's kind of a double-edged sword, I think, to some degree. If you guys have not checked out our premium content, you sure need to do so. Joe, can you tell me about the video you put together with Shay Folk yesterday? Shay from Eggview Solutions was on yesterday. We talked about 2025 corn and soybean marketing. Uh, it's not too early to start thinking about 25. We had kind of a, um, a very casual discussion on 25 budgets, kind of the early stuff that Shay is seeing across his customer base. Um, believe it or not, and, and some of you guys may not believe this, there are farmers out there who have been aggressive with 2025 sales already, which I know is is crazy to some of you guys. But um, I think Shay lays out some solid points here. And uh, this is a good starting point. We had some charts. We're kind of just getting going with the idea of marketing 2025 
uh, bushels. If you guys want to see the premium stuff, go to standardgrain.com. You can sign up this morning. This is a $50 per month subscription. You can cancel at any time. No other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. This is the best way to support what we're doing here. Um, we have no sponsors. We have no corporate backing. Our premium subs float the boat for us. This is what allows us to get up and do the podcast and YouTube every single business day. So give that deal a shot this morning, guys. If you're busy, if you're in the truck, you're in the tractor, um, it's super easy to do on your phone. Uh, Apple Pay, Google Pay, just a credit card. Any of that stuff works. So give that deal a shot. USDA will release its monthly crop production and WASD report on Thursday morning. The report will feature only old crop data for the U.S. USDA will release its first version of the new crop corn and soybean balance sheets in May. The trade expects lower Brazilian production estimates and mostly flat estimates for Argentina. Few changes are expected on the old crop U.S. balance sheets. So yes, to confirm, this is an old crop report. You're not going to see new crop yield estimates or balance sheets or anything like that. You'll see that stuff next month. Uh, when you get the carryout estimates for the United States, not um, not any huge changes expected. This uh, reduction in the corn ending stocks estimate is the result of lower or lower than expected March 1st stocks. Uh, the soybean number, I feel like the estimate could be a little bit higher because we missed the, they missed the stocks and, and stocks were higher than expected as of March 1st. Uh, the world stuff is going to be a function of what they do with South America. You've still got this debate regarding USDA versus CONAB and who's right about the Brazilian soybean crop. The trade expects USDA to make a rather substantial cut here from 155 to 151.7. And, and same thing with corn. You're looking for a fairly, fairly substantial cut to the Brazilian corn crop. I don't know if USDA does that or not. To give you a quick review of the stocks to use ratio uh, projections, um, we're looking at a much more bearish situation here in the United States and USDA should largely confirm this, uh, tomorrow. So this 14.9% stocks to use ratio for 23, 24, this is the projection uh, of where we'll be at the end of August this year. You can hang your head on that. It's very, very close to reality. The 17.2 for the, for 24, 25, that's just, that's all smoke and mirrors. Um, so much of that will hinge on what sort of growing season we have this year. It's, it's way too early to tell what the yield's going to be. Take five, six, seven bushels off your national uh, corn yield from trend, and, and you're going to be in a much different situation. Soybeans are uh, kind of similar. We're in a much more bearish situation right now for 23, 24. And, and again, you can hang your hat on the 23, 24 numbers. The egg outlook form numbers are, are just a guess. Um, soybeans are extremely yield sensitive. You take two bushels off the bean balance sheet, and it's it's a, a substantial adjustment. Uh, wheat expected to be uh, highest um stocks to use this year in three years and, and next year they're talking even more bearish but again largely a function of the size of the crops usda reported a flash sale of soybeans on tuesday u.s exporters sold five million bushels of, so of soybeans to unknown destinations for delivery during the current marketing year accumulated soybean sales are down 19 percent compared to the same period last year uh that's good i don't know who unknown is it's probably could it be china i don't know um, it wouldn't really make a ton of sense given the economics of the situation. It's good to see, probably not a needle mover. Um, I think USDA is going to have to come down with its soybean export estimate at some point in time. The USDA will no longer publish a July cattle inventory report. The agency stated that the report is being terminated due to budget limitations. The cattle industry will now be dependent on a once a year inventory report published in January. The NCBA responded by saying that the decision is disingenuous for an organization that prides itself on transparency. The USDA is also discontinuing its objective yield study for cotton and county estimates for livestock and crops. The elimination of county level data could be problematic for commercial grain traders who use the information for business decisions. In the grand scheme of things, when it comes to uh, government spending as a whole, this has got to be a drop in the bucket compared to the other things that we spend money on. I'll tell you this. Uh, when people ask me what I do for a living, I, I now just say I'm a podcaster. That's what I say. And and then they, they'll sometimes ask me to elaborate and they'll say, like, well, what do you talk about? And I'm like, well, put it this way. The podcast is really boring. And <laughs> there's like there's maybe one tenth of one percent of the population that cares about the things that we talk about. So when it comes to the general public, like nobody cares about this. The general public does not oh. care about this. It's just the tiny little fraction of people uh, like you and me and, and the people who are listening, which is a tiny, tiny fraction of the population that actually care about corn prices or corn crop estimates or things like that. So I guess the government looks at this and just says, well, like, you know, nobody's going to care except for 
except for these people, you know, except for this very small group of people. I like that. I like to see the government report. Some people hate them. I don't yeah, know. I mean, and you, you refer to these people, but these people are the people that the USDA is serving. Uh, like are they? Well, they should be. Have you ever seen a pie chart of USDA budgets and, and where the money goes? No, I haven't done that yet. It's a life. food. USDA is a food stamp program for the most part. And that's correct. Yeah, I guess I did know that. But I think it's still very disappointing. And you you said it right. It's a drop in the bucket with these reports. And it's I think it's wrong that they're cutting them out. I, know. I agree. I, I like seeing the reports. There are yeah. people and we get we get comments on our social media stuff every day. USDA is crooked and evil and they're manipulating mm -hmm. the markets. But guys, it's it's still the gold standard for data. It, right. it is. And, and that we don't have anything that's any better. So this is disappointing for me, for some of you USDA haters out there. And that's fine. If you hate USDA, that's fine. I get it. Um, it's just it is what it is, I guess. Right. So Treasury yields declined on Tuesday ahead of key inflation data this week. The 10 year Treasury fell by 0.06 percent to 4.36 percent. The two year Treasury declined by 0.04 percent to 4.74 percent. The consumer price index will be released today and is forecast to show that prices increased by 3.4 percent in March, up from 3.2 percent in February. The producer price index will follow on Thursday and is expected to show a yearly increase of 2.2 percent up from 1.6 percent in February. Recent inflation data and remarks from Federal Reserve members have led to uncertainty over the timing and frequency of rate cuts this year. So for today, this will be a big market mover, probably, and some of the outside stuff, probably not so much for your grain and oil seed and, and livestock markets. Bigger picture, this could um, influence the Fed's decisions when it comes to interest rates, which I think influences or, or impacts rather a lot of you guys. So uh, this will be a big deal. Um, a little bit later this morning. What did Cal do yesterday? Uh, they were kind of able to find some solid ground. I'd say feeders closed an average of 194 higher. Live cattle closed an average of a buck 26 higher. Box beef was mostly unchanged on the day yesterday. Choice ended the day at 302.09. That was up two cents. Select ended the day at 299.90. That was down 37 cents. Outside market's pretty quiet. Everybody's waiting on these CPI numbers. Uh, US dollars off a little bit. Stocks about flat. Bonds about flat. Crude oil's up 40 cents. In the May WTI at 8563. Have a great day, guys. We'll talk to you on Thursday.